All right, guys, let's head on back to the main town for now. I hear wind in my ears. Is that the actual game? I think that might be the actual game. No. I'm done. I'm done. I'm walking away from this game right now. Before we begin, a little disclaimer. I cannot fully read Japanese, so this video is a perspective from a North American point of view, with my personal thoughts and opinions regarding my experience and play of the game. Blue Protocol is by no means a final product, and is subject to change in the future, so please keep that in mind as we continue. Hello everyone, I'm your host Frosty Coffee one hd Today, this video is all about my impressions and review of Blue Protocol's closed beta test. It took me a while but I had to get through my thoughts and opinions all down on paper before I made this video. To everyone that is still asking or wondering, is this closed beta test still available or the game in general? Currently, as of now, no one should be able to access the closed beta test publicly, as the testing period was taken from April 23rd until early morning on April 27th. Blue Protocol is being made by some of the best developers within Bandai Namco's company. The group is known as Project Sky Blue, which in turn building the game known as Blue Protocol. Currently the game is known as an online action JRPG in Japan for now at least, while a lot of the fans are considering this to be an MMORPG. Now I'm not here to get into the specifics between the definition between the two, however, if you want to become a millionaire, all you have to do is choose from the following options. 50-50. Call a friend or ask the audience. The previous MMORPG that Bandai Namco worked on was Bless Online, and as far as I know, the game is still running but with poor reviews and not a great background on life for the game. I personally was excited to play the game originally, but once it launched, it instantly went downhill in North America from there. So my hopes of having a new great MMORPG to play was crushed like it has been many times in the past before. Now I'm not saying Blue Protocol is going in that direction, but simply to look at the track record of the previous big title online MMORPG that Bandai holds under their belt. Blue Protocol has been in development for a bit of time here, and if I remember, correct, if I remember correctly, ever since 2017, with its first appearance showing in June 2019, showcasing a preview video for Blue Protocol's closed alpha test. Later on, the alpha test was taken place shortly after in July. Lots of players excited for the game's development slowly started to grow and expand not only in Japan, but around the globe with fans' excitement and beyond. After one delay due to the 2020 global pandemic, Japanese residents got the chance to play Blue Protocol's closed beta test in April. The hype was ecstatic with many fans watching streamers through Twitch and YouTube had the chance to see what is in store for Bandai Namco's new big project. Jumping into Blue Protocol was truly exciting, seeing that Bandai Namco's logo appear on screen with the secret tower in the background, to listening to that rich music and watching that Blue Protocol logo appear on screen. It was decent for a main menu screen back in 2001, but considering this game is made in Unreal Engine 4, I did expect the main menu to be a bit more exciting and inspiring to look at, something to draw me more into the game. Now I apologize for being critical, and not everyone will agree with me going forward, but all I want is the best for this game going forward, and I have high expectations coming from a great company like Bandai and the team behind the game. Regardless, because I was so hyped about the game, I was reeled in from the moment the game started, regardless of how the main menu changed from alpha to beta. It was easy to know where to access the exit, options, and start of the game menu to get things going. I quickly started character creation with no problem finding my way. I jumped into character creation and started to make an avatar. Now, with the kind of technology currently available to us and considering the level of detail that can be put into a game in this day and age, I did expect a bit more from character creation, especially considering the other games Bandai has produced. The games may come from different developers, but there are many resources and inspiration that can come from different games in order to make something great. 
Now it has been confirmed from a dev live stream that they will be adding more details to character creation for the future, so I do hope more things like hair, styles, facial tattoos, color palette options, and starting clothing will be added to the game for launch. When I make my character from an MMO or RPG perspective, I expect to see more options because I like to take a long amount of time making my character unique and to my liking before I get started in any game. I don't want character creation to be as horrid as a game like Soul Worker when I first start a game. Considering the amount of references at game developers' disposal, I would expect maybe more game options in the future. All I ask is please don't care go character simulator on us. <laughs> However, the way everything was set up for character creation makes it easy and simple to navigate from one option to another, from character perspective and facial options to seeing how my character will look in certain scenes or in-game. Personally, I do feel like there could be a setting to change the background for scenery so that I can see my character under specific lighting environments such as day or night before I get started. Many games with character creation have options like this to choose from. Take Code Vein, for example, has great background lighting choices from bright, sunset orange, and navy blue night settings, which happens to be another game under Bandai Namco's name. Moving past character creation, I was able to quickly choose my class with a great setup on most of my class abilities. A nice touch that the devs added was being able to see videos show up as you clicked over each individual ability. This is a great option, and I think it should be kept just the way it is. Once I was ready to move past character creation, we got right into choosing my name, which I do feel should allow spaces and at least 15 characters, not just a max of 12. Story. After all was said and done, I began my journey into the world of Blue Protocol. The story started out perfectly, giving us mystery and suspense. Whose voice is that? Who am I? How did I get where I am to begin? All kinds of questions I was eager to know. In the beginning, you meet a girl named Fest that apparently doesn't know where she came from either and is willing to help you along your journey. But Fest isn't so easy to help if it doesn't involve a little bit of cash in the back pocket. So she makes us, the protagonist, a slave to Fest until death do us part. Little did you know, you and your new friend Fest Know that there's a bigger plot that lies ahead. Fest is a young demi-human, helps us to recover our memories along the way and to figure out where everything is throughout the small town of the Astralites. From writing to the acting, it gave me the perfect vibes from the classic to present day anime vibes. One that will want you constantly asking for more at every turn and step of your journey. Some scenes even surprised me along the way, closer to the end of the prologue. The art style and colors chosen for this game really pop, giving it a really eye-catching feeling. So if you're a Sword Art Online fan, Tales fan, or just a general an anime RPG lover, I would suggest picking up this game when it launches because it's just that mysterious and interesting to keep you on the edge of your seat, looking to see what comes next world. Speaking of great art style and eye-catching visuals, that is no problem when it comes to the vast world of Blue Protocol. Traversing the world is simple and easy, finding your way from place to place once you step out of the small city. From the start of the game, the tutorial teaches you to go out and unlock the map by finding each and every flag point on the map, like a small scavenger hunt for each node. If you have ever played one of the most successful MMOs, you will quickly understand some of the references I'll make along the way. For example, if you have ever played Final Fantasy XIV or seen footage of the game, you will know that Bandai has taken some pointers from this game in the past, especially with the well-known Sword Art Online games, also under Bandai Namco's name. Whether it is transporting from zone to zone, or locating Aetherwind in order to fly in Final Fantasy XIV, amongst other gameplay ideology. And that is exactly what is going on here in Blue Protocol. Except with Blue Protocol, similar to finding Aether Wind points to fly in FFX IV, you can unlock the map by finding these flagged points throughout the map. 
Throughout the world as your per classic RPG, you will find enemies scattered throughout the land and at times scheduled zone bosses that can attack you or ignore you based on your level. I will have a guide on unlocking each waypoint and every one of these in the future. The world however is rich in colors and never disappoints. Exploring the world was exciting and captivating. Seeing the moving grass, the wind swirling in the air, to seeing the trees move. One thing I was kind of surprised about was the collision with objects throughout the world, such as trees. In a classic MMO environment, you would simply go right through an object at times, as if it didn't even exist. Having that added level of immersion was really interesting to see. I have even just set my character on idle just to watch the sunrise and sunset of the game. So if you're a screenshot whore like myself, then be prepared to take a lot of screenshots in this game just for the visual appeal alone. Classes. This is where things get a bit more complicated. From the start, you get to choose only one class, but fear not. You can easily change your class to Agus Fighter, Twin Striker, Spellcaster, or Blast Archer once you get past the tutorial content in the beginning of the game. Unlike most traditional MMOs and RPGs, Blue Protocol is going by a form factor using a non-Trinity system meaning there is no such thing as a DPS, tank, or healer in this game. However, the base classes will very much represent or give off a vibe of your traditional tank, DPS, or healer roles. But, this is where the game gets different. Blue Protocol gives off the feel of a Monster Hunter style approach where you are limited to healing potions of 7 per dungeon, and unlimited while out in the world. So healing is never an issue with these four base classes since all of them either have a healing ability or a potion on hand. The class I played during the closed beta test was the Blast Archer, which had an AoE healing ability amongst other support skills, which was very beneficial from dungeon to raid environments. While the other three classes were built around Agus Fighter for aggro, Twin Striker for high melee damage, and Spellcaster for big burst elemental damage, all classes had their perks and defects, but together as a team throughout different game modes, they complemented each other, making it an enjoyable experience through and through. Although there isn't a meta yet, I'm sure there will be one in the future for a perfect build, considering there was a skill tree where the players can allocate their points, unlock skills, and perks for their class each time they level up. If anyone is familiar with the eight-year-old now to finally be released in North America, Fantasy Star Online 2, you will all know what I'm talking about in terms of point allocation and upgrades to class skills and attributes. The skill tree was very easy to find and understand, even if I wasn't able to fully understand everything instantly. During the closed beta test, we had four classes, but data mining suggests there might be possible roll soul stones for base classes and one more class confirmed, which will probably be released at launch called the Gunslinger currently. I'll drop this little tidbit of info though. Unfortunately, after personally testing, I wasn't able to play the Gunslinger through other means, as if it was half-coded and default to Blast Archer, but its visual effects may have been present for basic skills, alongside being able to use light and dark elementals, which wasn't a being allowed in the closed beta test. Moving forward. As you gear up, you can find and gather materials from enemies and throughout the world to craft together a new elemental tier weapon. Also, fusing imagines into your weapons for stronger stats. I will talk about that more in the future guides though. Missions, also known as dungeons. The game has distinct modes as you go throughout the story and end game. The most known mode being dungeons or missions in this case. Missions are able to be accessed very early on in Blue Protocol. From the start, you will be required to play the dungeon solo if it pertains to the story. As you move on and level up, you will gain access to higher difficulties of previous dungeons, should you meet the level requirement and battle score requirements. Every character will continue to level up as they play the game, but they will also be responsible for maintaining their battle score as they gear up. Battle scores are based on your weapon tier, adventure rank, and class level. Gearing up is easy as long as you know the basics by simply listening to the tutorial prompts from NPCs as you go throughout the game. Going back to dungeons, I feel like the solo dungeons were okay, but I do feel like it would be more enjoyable with other players. Whenever I play an MMO, for example, I would like to share those experiences in-game with others. 
The game, I feel, should give an option to play solo or alongside other players, or specifically story dungeons. Scale the dungeon enemies based on how players are inside of the dungeon. Then allow higher difficulties of the dungeon to proceed later on and still keep those options available. Going from cutscene to cutscene, make players watch it unless all members have vetoed a cutscene. So for any of those that are speedrun players, they can easily move on without being bothered to wait, especially if they decide to make an alt character. Throughout my time playing the difficulty dungeons from C, B, and A rank, I felt unsatisfied with the level of difficulty or at least allowing players to bum rush the entire dungeon just to get to the final boss with little to no effort. Some instances lock you off until you kill a specific enemy in the dungeon, but I wish that Blue Protocol adapted restrictions like Final Fantasy XIV where areas would be blocked off until the enemies were all killed until moving forward. Simply put, regardless of the difficulty, it was just too easy. I wish the difficulty scaled based on player count and gear stats or synced registration. Now to be a little bit contradictory, I enjoyed dungeons. I enjoyed the atmosphere it presented in each and every one. Enemies included didn't really phase me, even though I thought there were some copy and paste at times. I was still entertained by jumping into a dungeon with other players. Boss battles were really fun and, for the most part, unique. But the ads that appeared with each one didn't really pose a threat regardless of the difficulty. I do feel there should be more phases to each boss to give it a little bit more of an edge while still keeping that smart AI intact. I personally loved how an Aegis fighter enemy would go around protecting their allies, such as Spellcaster in combat. That was a surprise to me from the beginning, and I really enjoyed how smart the AI presented itself. A lot of games have very scripted bosses, and I feel Blue Protocol is a bit more unique in that sense. If anything should be scripted, I feel there should be phase changes like a rampage mode if they wanted to go a mix between Monster Hunter and Final Fantasy XIV based on health percentage to add a little bit more of difficulty that I was talking about previously. I strongly believe there should be more rewards going through a dungeon as well as besides just gathering items, experience, and lumen money. I realize that Blue Protocol doesn't have any gear rewards but I feel there should be cosmetic rewards from dungeons or gear rewards, such as weapons that only slightly boost your stats in gear and battle score. Give players a reason to come back to dungeons for specific gear or rewards. We have red weapons as base, but why not green weapons for dungeons? While crafted weapons can be reserved for your special crafted weapons that are higher tier builds. Now, as mentioned before, you can't go into a dungeon with potions made from the open world. When you enter a dungeon, you will only be given 7 potions that you can use on a small cooldown timer upon use. Very similar to Monster Hunter. Arena Mode The first time I was able to unlock Arena Mode was upon reaching the max level of 35 in the closed beta test alongside raids. Just like dungeons, you're expected to hit a specific level, adventure rank, and gear score. Arena mode was a lot of fun. I could keep on playing the game mode over and over again. I noticed with each and every one, you could get very close with experience compared to the next difficulty dungeon that was available. If you wanted to, you could just spam arena mode if you weren't max level. Also gaining lumen money and a small amount of GC upon completion. I can see this as a fun game mode to play with friends for defeating waves of enemies with a surprise boss at the end. I personally didn't feel like anything should change about this game mode. The only thing I wish that this game mode lasted longer, or maybe with an endless wave of enemies and challenge yourself to a fight against mobs of enemies until you can't go any further. Similar to your Killing Floor or Call of Duty Zombies maybe. However, it would be interesting if they did add a progressive system to arena mode where you have to quickly pick and choose what skills and perks you wanted to have for the next wave almost like it's its own leveling system, but strictly for arena mode. That would be a neat feature if they implemented that. So for the future of arena mode, one thing that I do really want to have on my checklist is new stages. Not the same exact stage for each arena mode. So get us away from the arena and maybe take us to a completely different stage. So upon reaching a new version of difficulty, as they make new stages, 
I feel like the stage should be constantly changing. So for example, like Super Smash Bros, Melee, or Brawl, or Ultimate, you will see on, for example, let's say Pokemon Stadium, you will see a stage like that, or Final Destination, the stage is changing while you fight enemies and waves of enemies. So as that is happening, I feel like the stage should be constantly changing as you're in the stage. Or maybe you have to jump to a new platform just to get to the other section of enemies in order to complete it. You're on a time and you're also fighting against enemies. So I feel like the stage should be constantly changing. Maybe that's something that they should do in the future. Time attack. Now this is more of a competitive solo competition to see how quickly you can clear a dungeon on your own record time. This would be very similar to your ghost run in Mario Kart without a ghost and vehicle attached to your ass. It'd be kinda neat to give a ghost version of your best run or an online version of someone in the leaderboards to play up against though. Blue Protocol devs even set up a leaderboard during the closed beta test which was later announced on the official website with the top 15 or 20 players, if I remember correctly. I didn't spend much time on this game mode since it wasn't really my style and focus of the game during the small amount of time we had to play the game. But if you're a solo player looking to challenge yourself, then this is the game mode for you. I personally think that this game mode is a waste of production time, but that's my personal opinion. I just don't feel like a lot of players out of the wide spectrum are going to play this but it was a little bit of fun during the closed beta test for challenging purposes. If they're gonna make more time attack dungeons, one thing that I could suggest for the future is just like arena mode, make a brand new stage. Don't make it the same dungeons that we've played before. Make something unique. Don't make it the same content that we've already gone through with already the same difficulties. We want to try and challenge ourselves with something like time attack. Make us go through a stage that is completely unique to us. Make it something unique. Make it something that players are gonna wanna play instead of seeing the same old scenery. Make us go through something that is unique or completely different. Now, although Time Attack did have a little bit of some structures being different, I do feel like they should expand upon that and make it completely unique. Raids. This is probably the most highly anticipated game mode that everyone is looking forward to. It is also the focal point of what shows the direction of the game beyond the story and showcases what is in store for Blue Protocol for the endgame content. During the closed beta test, I found a location in the endgame zone for the closed beta test which looked like a rip sitting at the edge of a cliff. Originally, I couldn't access it until I found that it was later on an endgame raid point. It was later scheduled during select times for only an hour at a time for raids to be available. Now, the development team can go in two different directions with this. They can either make it very similar to emergency operations like in Phantasy Star Online 2, or they can make it like Final Fantasy XIV where you can queue up at any given time throughout the week with your squad to go at an endgame raid. You can queue up with 20 players at once. Now unfortunately, due to the sheer mass of players, the queues messed up from time to time. But once I managed to get in, it was a blast. Up until my frames per second started to dip from 120 down to 15 to 20 frames per second. Now my system was doing not too bad for being able to handle it at max settings, but as for other players, I'm not sure they could handle it. Now I didn't test it, but I heard if you can turn off player effects within the settings, you can boost right back up to around that range of 120 frames per second with no issue. Regardless, I hope that the team works on network stability and optimization, not only in raids, but the main city as well. During the raid, it was a lot of fun trying to figure out how the boss worked. As a blast archer, I was able to figure out the weak point of the boss by attacking the tail more often gaining more critical hits by doing so. Overall, I enjoyed raids more than anything. Now, I'm not sure if this was possible or not, but I attempted to access the ice guns placed around the outskirts of the enclosed map, but I was unable to control them. I have no idea if that was a bug or if they were just automatic. Personally, I feel that they should have added a level of difficulty to have the ice turrets available to players. Another topic I would like to bring up is the level of difficulty of the boss. Although the raid boss was decently placed in terms of time for defeating a raid boss, I feel there should be more difficulty to the raid boss, 
or like I mentioned in the dungeon aspect of the final bosses, to have more scripted phases or enrage factors to a boss. Now during the raid boss, you could destroy the boss's tail and more mechanics would appear, but not enough to become a threat. I wish the boss did an ultimate move, or for example, if we damaged the boss enough that it couldn't go up into the air, it would do line AoE dashes across the room multiple times, and the only way to stop it was by freezing the boss. Many other options could be to have multiple platforms or mechanics to break up the team so that they have players to strategize mechanics in order to defeat a boss. And if someone doesn't follow through with their actions or defeating ads, then the boss will soften rage or maybe be more difficult or manage to kill. Throughout my testing, I had so much fun participating in raids, especially considering the reward was 10k grand coins which allowed me to get some pretty sweet cosmetics. From a range point of view, it was a good fight. For melee, it might have been a bit more challenging just because the boss kept on jumping around so much. But ultimately, I feel like the raids are going in the right direction, but just needs a little bit more of a push and optimization to make things perfect as they can be. Now, one final send off that I have to say about raids is simply that, like I said before, the added level of difficulty. So. For a future idea, why not have players go up to the rift and be able to access the different difficulties, like dungeons, like arena modes. Why not have C rank, A rank, S rank, and allow players with their 20 squad to be able to go and select those different modes. But upon completion, simply allow players to have an added level of reward. So more GC, but not only GC and other experience, but allow players to be able to have maybe a cosmetic that is special to raid that drop from raid and or allow players to have special weaponry as well. I feel like weapons are a big thing and I feel like raids should be the end game content, not just being able to craft your, your material. Allow players to craft their weapons, but not allow those those weapons to be the end game content unless you simply have to have special gathering items within those raids that allow you to craft those special weapons. Allow players to be able to have a special type of piece of material like you would out in the open world in these raids or simply allow those weapons that are special to drop from raids exclusively. Allow special weaponry to boost your scores and allow it to be like maybe a special glowing weapon that no one is able to access unless you specifically go to end game raids. Allow end game raids to have a special type of reward that is special to raids. Allow players, give them a reward that makes them want to go and do that. Like I've said before, give players a special reward to be able to access in end game raids. Something that drives them. Give them something throughout the week that drives them to want to get a new piece of gear each and every week and give players a reason to want to come back to these raids. Verdict. Truly Blue Protocol is another game in development under housing care of Bandai Namco Online. Going forward, I am really looking forward to this game and what kind of new inspiration it will bring to other companies and even more games to come. Blue Protocol is a breathtaking game with anime-inspired visuals and scenery elements of your traditional MMO, but with a unique spin moving away from its classic Trinity system. Currently, the game is known as an online action JRPG, while many fans consider it to be a polished MMO RPG experience. I guess we will have to wait and see what the development team decides to do going forward. Many Japanese players have voiced their opinions with the devs, and it seems like a lot of players are unhappy with the closed beta test. Personally, I feel like it is a step in the right direction, giving the development team great constructive criticism, even if it is a bit critical in order to make the game a masterpiece. Throughout my experience in the closed beta test, I felt like the game was very polished, but needs a little bit more tweaks and added game mechanics to give it the added push it needs to succeed. So far, Blue Protocol feels like a relaxing experience for casual players that might be new to RPGs to experience. However, it may leave some RPG and MMO veterans wanting more at the end of the day, 
and may even go to say something about its life as a game unless the development team steps up to the plate going forward in this year or 2020. I would love to see seasonal events and much more. Maybe even world changes from fall to winter, with snow on the ground and town changes. Until we hear more news in June, we won't know what to expect next. Now, if this was a final product, I would be happy to give it a rating. But since it's just a closed beta test, all of you will just have to wait and see at launch. Woo! Are we done yet? Gosh, I need to stop writing such long scripts. I need to find myself a drink. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, be sure to stick around. I've got all kinds of content from Blue Protocol, from guides, gameplays, up-to-date news, and of course, a full-on story playthrough of Blue Protocol. Be sure to stick around. I'm one of the top up-to-date news locations for Blue Protocol right here on my channel, so be sure to stick around. I've got awesome content, not only from the closed beta test, but for the future of the launch as well. Thank you all for watching. If you'd like to see more from my channel, please consider supporting me today by smashing that subscribe button and ring the bell icon on your way out from the innkeeper's desk to be notified when my next video goes live. If you'd like to support me further throughout the week, you can see me live on Twitch and get updated on my activities and stream scheduling through my Twitter. All right, I'm out of here, but have a great day, everyone. And of course, stay frosty, everyone.